from record rates of erectile dysfunction to the inability to connect to sexual partners. Men have many good reasons to regret online pornography. Though as a feminist campaigner, what I care about is the impact on women and girls. In 2010, researchers analysed 300 popular porn scenes and found 88% contained physical aggression, overwhelmingly committed by men against women. And last year, a large survey of British men under 40 revealed that 71% have spat at, gagged, slapped or strangled their female partner during sex. A third admitted to not asking for consent beforehand. Over half acknowledged that pornography had influenced their interest in violent sex. And one respondent, who I'll refer to as Dick, not his real name, told the BBC, uh, who commissioned the survey, that he had tried part choking and slapping his partner during sex, but that it never turns out the way it looks in porn. When you try it in real life, you're disappointed quite a lot. I imagine his partner was probably a little underwhelmed too. But it is not just adult women who are bearing the brunt of online pornography. Over 40% of girls in the UK between the ages of 13 and 17 say they have been coerced into unwanted sex acts. So in other words, they're victims of rape and sexual assault. In any other context, the driver for such criminal abuse would be interrogated. But somehow, we all become oddly coy when it comes to criticising behaviour that happens in the bedroom. It's as if the veneer of sex deflects critical thought. But it should be remembered that once upon a time, we were quick to dismiss domestic abuse as a private matter that happened behind closed doors. And as I deliver this speech, I wonder how many women watching today will have been hit, spat at, strangled or coerced into unwanted, painful sex acts because of their partner's porn use. And I know that it's an uncomfortable truth that many will not even have the framework to recognise this as abusive because they have been groomed by pornography to think of it as normal. And the consequences can be extreme. Earlier this year, I spoke to a young woman called Rose. In 2009, when she was 14, Rose was abducted at knife point and held for 12 hours, during which time she was raped, beaten and stabbed in the leg by two men, while a third filmed parts of the assault. A few months later, Rose was browsing social media when she found herself tagged by others at her school in footage of the attack in films including teen crying and getting slapped around, teen getting destroyed, passed out teen. One of them had over 400,000 views. So she recalls that the worst videos were the ones where I was passed out. So I invite the audience to consider, is her experience not enough to make you reconsider whether online pornography is to be regretted? And teen is one of the most popular search terms on Pornhub. It has been since the platform was started. And in the teen category, you will find titles like barely legal Thai street teen, fucked and facialized for five dollars. That film currently has three million views. Other popular categories include incest and at the time of writing the most popular film on Pornhub is Stepson Fucked His Young Stepmother and as an aside I'm sure I don't need to point out to a Cambridge audience the passive object in that title. And independent pornographers who brand themselves as alternative are no better. So one of my opponents in this debate has worked with a producer of so-called lesbian films with titles including I Want to Bang My Sister and My First Black Girlfriend. Another top performing genre is Painal, and that's a charming portmanteau of pain and anal. And preparing for this talk today, within 30 seconds, I found a film called Unprepared Raw Anal Milf Can't Handle the Pain, But He Kept Going. It currently has four million views. If further proof were needed that pornography is about male supremacy and not about sex, I'll uh, let you listen to the words of CEO Paul Heskey. He helpfully explains. Essentially, it comes from every man who looks at his wife who's just nagged him. And he says, I'd like to fuck you in the ass." He's angry at her, right? And he can't. So he would rather watch some girl taking it. Because when people watch anal, nobody wants to watch a girl enjoying anal. Mm. Empowering.
So those who are the smiling face of the industry, the women who claim to love doing porn and take part in debates like this, are not representative. When you look into the histories of most women in pornography, a familiar pattern emerges. Where childhood trauma and sexual abuse is replayed in every scene, with bodies numbed by drugs and self-loathing. Indeed, the world's most famous pornographer, Jenna Jameson, disclosed that she was raped as a child, and then again by her abusive boyfriend's uncle, and then again by a group of high school boys who severely beat her and then left her for dead. Her story is far from unusual. So I invite you after this debate to look up the stories of women in pornography and join up the dots. Because it's not just those in the Anglosphere who are exploited. On a global scale, it is estimated that 4.8 million people worldwide are trafficked into forced sexual exploitation. 21% of those are children, 96% are female. Indeed, those who have fled war and famine and disaster are themselves the subject of refugee porn. And the fact that so little action is taken by international bodies, the fact that there aren't COBRA meetings every day to deal with the scale of this emergency, reveals the industry as both one of the most powerful in the world, and arguably just how many of our politicians are quite literal misogynist tossers. And those who consume pornography whilst wringing their hands about fair trade coffee and single-use plastics are hypocrites. The average shelf life of a female performer in pornography in the USA is around three years, and some estimates suggest that by my age, 37, she will be dead. Were I to use racial slurs in this debate, I would rightly be called out. And yet when it comes to pornography, dehumanising racist stereotypes are positively encouraged, with black men portrayed as sexually aggressive and bestial, Asian women as submissive and exotic, Eastern European women as impoverished and desperate to please. People in pornography are afforded no humanity. And like all addictions, pornography users become desensitised, seeking out more and more depraved and extreme content. Now this suits pornographers who use algorithms to warp desire further, securing new markets for ever more niche content. But the impact of this is not just in the violence that adult women are subjected to, but in a huge growth in the production and distribution of images of child sexual abuse. Figures since the online shift show this starkly. In the UK, the number of images on the police's child abuse database has risen dramatically from fewer than 10,000 in the 1990s to 13.4 million currently. And as the UK entered lockdown, Simon Bailey, the national chief uh, police lead for child protection, outlined a growing trend. British men aged between 18 and 26 are emerging as a new group of online paedophiles. He explains, they get to the point where there's no pornographic material that's stimulating them. So then they start to explore what child abuse imagery might look like. They start getting their kicks from that. It is a conceit of the highest order to pretend that pornography is anything other than the privileged orgasming over the exploitation of the world's most vulnerable and desperate people. And it hurts everyone. The so-called willing performers who suffer from double incontinence, drug abuse, PTSD and premature death. The forced 4.8 million people trafficked into the industry. The pornography consumers themselves who are so numbed to pleasure they are unable to enjoy fulfilling relationships. Each of these groups has every reason to regret online pornography. So I urge those opposing the motion, those who think that pornography is sexually liberating, to look into the eyes of performers, those who are referred to as cum holes, as sluts, as bitches, and ask yourselves, is your orgasm worth it?